Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Glad you're here. Um, before we get going, um, we're, we're going to be really flexible for the next couple weeks. <laughs> Today, we don't have anybody on the order. <laughs> so we're going to adapt. How many here, people here like seeing uh, karaoke? <laughs> That's essentially what we're doing today. <laughs> and next week, as you've probably seen on the screen in the weekly update, we have no power. So we're going old school, printed bulletins, getting out our handles, we're going to sit back there under the windows and enjoy an old fashioned service. No, I'm not going to wear it all. <laughs> Other than that, uh, things are good. How's everybody doing today? Good. Staying cool? Good. All right, what do we have for celebration? Okay, we can celebrate we're in summertime. How's that? <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see what I have for announcements. Announce. So, next week, as I said, there's no power, so we're going old school, printed bulletins and hymnals. We're doing the worship service back there so you can get the light from the windows. Uh, and next week is our last service until the 4th of August. We're shutting down two weeks over July, as we did last year, and I strongly encourage you to visit some of the other congregations around here. If you're looking for a United service, we've got South Gloucester, Osgood, uh, it is in Osgood, not Cars, and North Gore still have services. North Gore is at 9.30, though, the others are at 10 o'clock. Or you can explore some of the other churches in town here, St. James Anglican or Knox Presbyterian, they both start at 10 o'clock as well. So a chance to reach out and connect, see what some of the other ones offer. Uh, oh, or Barbie, I forgot to mention that as well. They also have services all summer at 10 o'clock. Morning! Hey girls, welcome back. <laughs> All right, let us start with our landing home. We are gathered on the unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe peoples and acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. A part of our commitment to reconciliation with indigenous peoples of Turtle Island, we support the 2015 Truth and Reconciliation Commission call to action. We call upon the church parties to the settlement agreement and all other faith groups to respect indigenous people's rights to self-determination in spiritual matters, including the right to practice, develop, and teach their own religious and their own spiritual traditions, customs, and ceremonies. And we're getting there, but we still have a long way to go on that. Why don't we spend a moment centering? If you're comfortable, close your eyes. And we're just going to take a moment to connect with God's love. Take a deep breath and breathe into your core the life-giving spirit of God. Breathe out any cares or anxieties that we've got to do today. <coughs> breathe in goodness and truth. And breathe out fearfulness and worry. Let us worship together, held by God's loving embrace. And as always, we start our, our service by lighting our Christ candle. And we light this candle in our love for God, our love for the Holy Spirit, and our love for Jesus Christ. May the light of this candle remind us of the strength found in God. May the light of this candle remind us of the truth found in Christ. May the light of this candle remind us of the Holy Spirit that fills us, connects us, and unites us all as our faith family in Christ. The response is called to worship this morning. Please read the portions in the bold yellow. As disciples of Christ, we are together. As disciples of Christ, we are people of as disciples of Christ, we care for one another. As disciples of Christ, we serve, we share, we pray. In this time together, may God's presence transform us. In this time together, may God's presence transform the world. Amen. Let's start by singing our opening hymn, I'm going to live so God can use me. As I said, can music. I don't have a little bouncing ball, but essentially we're doing karaoke. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to live so God can use me. 
to take part in your reconciling work in the world. Your love is endless. Your mercy without measure. And so we praise you with heart, mind, strength, and soul in the name of Jesus, your Son, blessed by your Spirit, working in us, with us, around us, and beyond us. Amen. Please join in our confession. God of overflowing grace, we confess we often take your blessings for granted. Forgetting life is a precious gift, we waste time on things that don't matter. We complain when things don't go our way, ignoring those who face even steeper challenges. Forgive us, O oh God. Renew our calling to share your abundant love for Jesus' sake. Amen. Please know that while it's true, all of us have sinned. We've sinned because we don't love perfectly as Jesus commands us, as God commands us. But there's a greater truth. The greater truth is no matter what we do, no matter what we say, God's love for us is perfect. Receive the mercy of God this day and be in peace with God, yourself, and one another. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Please take a moment to share the peace of Christ with one another. There you go. Uh -huh. There's another person to help out, too. Hi, I'm Paul. Hi, brother. Hi, Paul. Nice to meet you. What's your name? Perfect. So, we're changing the order today. Hi. <laughs> So you'll see when we get into the reflection why we've been blessed to have some children today. And I'm hoping they can help me teach everyone here a lesson. Are you ready to teach the big folks a lesson today? So one of the things that we're talking about, <coughs> one of the things that we're talking about is how everybody, that's okay, we like it when people talk here, that's good. <laughs> she wants to connect the attic. That's good. So, what can we teach grown-ups about? Hmm. Well, you all know that God created the earth and creation and all the animals and plants and everything, but those things are suffering now because of, well, 
weather getting warmer and more storms and stuff like that. How do you think that these big people should help take care of God's creation, help take care of the planet? What should they do? Should we hmm, maybe clean up? Yes. yes! Pick up garbage on the side of the road or anywhere you see trash. What about uh, using less gas? Yes! yes. <laughs> you don't agree? No? <laughs> we shouldn't? <laughs> What are some other ideas that we can do to help them? Yes, yes. We have another young person here, just like that. Loves to answer, and as soon as they hang up, they can't remember what it was. That's perfectly okay. We're all right with that. Are there any other things we can do to help protect nature? Yes. Same thought. <laughs> So the point is, is that, yes, you remember? No? <laughs> okay. You know what? You have two choices now. Abby and Lily can show you where we can play downstairs. There's a little pool down there. There's lots of stuff to do down there. Or you can stay here because what I'm talking about in about five minutes is how... Yes, you can. One second. <laughs> yeah, one minute now. 30 seconds. <laughs> We're going to be talking about how people like you, no matter how big you are, no matter what your age, you all have things you can share and you can teach other people, no matter who you are. And both of you owe me a thought, because you both had really good ideas. Yes! What is it? <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay. What's that? Okay. <laughs> Let's say a quick prayer, and then you can go downstairs and pray, or you can step here and help the adults. Let's pray. Can we pray? You want to help me pray? Come here. There we go. Dear God, we love you. You love us. And we will do everything to protect your beloved world. Take care of us this lovely week. Amen. Amen. Go have fun. <laughs> All right. Let's pray. God of wisdom in the morning, we long to hear your word for our war. Excuse me. Lord, please help my tongue. God of wisdom and warning, we long to hear your word for our times and our lives. By the power of your spirit, open scripture for us and prepare us to be challenged and changed as we encounter Christ, your living word. Amen. Amen. I invite Sue to come forward with our reading today. They're already having fun. Perfect. I think I can still go to that. <laughs> Okay, today's reading is from the second book of Samuel. I have new glasses, they don't mind at all. Anyway, second book of Samuel, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5 and 9 through 10. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time our soul was taken to us. It was you who let out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people of Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for forty years. At Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and at Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah thirty-three years. David occupied the stronghold and named it the city of David. David built the city around from Milo inward. And David became greater and greater, for the Lord of hosts was with him. The second reading is from Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. 
He left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many of them who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom he has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and amongst their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their disbelief. Then he went about, um, out. Then he went about amongst the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and to not put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed all that should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. <coughs> As you can see, we're talking about young people teaching us today. What a greater blessing to have young people with us today. So, that just works. Thank you. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and the actions of the be acceptable in your sight. And Lord, let's say. So, over the last few weeks, we've been hearing about Jesus' ministry traveling through Galilee and healing people and teaching anyone who would listen. Demonstrating the power of God's love through miracles and wisdom and compassion. Now his hometown, Nazareth, and his family were also of Galilee. Nazareth was a very small village, about 30 kilometers west of the Sea of Galilee, up in the hills. And it wasn't the greatest place to be from. In fact, there was an expression that nothing good could come from there. It was an obscure little village in a remote part of a forgotten region. And archaeologists tell us that 2,000 years ago, there would have been about 500 people living there. Now there's about 80,000, so it's grown quite a bit. And as you're aware, when you grow up in a small town, like Magic, everybody knows everybody else. That was especially true 2,000 years ago when there was no television, no internet, or vehicles, or any way to escape easily from the town. There weren't many ways or even reasons to get out of Nazareth. So people stayed, and they probably knew just about everyone, everything there was to know about everyone else in their village. And everyone in Nazareth knew just about everything there was to know about Mary and Joseph and their illegitimate son, Jesus. Today's Gospel reading, we heard Jesus return to his hometown and spoke in the synagogue on their Sabbath. And many people would have been listening to Jesus that morning. They would have grown up with Jesus. They would have known him since he was an infant. They played together and studied the Torah together and learned how to be adults together. Most of those young men and women would have grown up with Jesus. And by then they would have settled down and had families of their own. And there may have been rumors about what was going on with Jesus when he left home, traveling with that band of followers, preaching and teaching. And they may have also heard that he'd be healing people and that some people were calling him the Messiah. But clearly they knew better. They knew Jesus from the time he was gay. Huh? After all, he was just Jesus, the boy they'd grown up with in the nowhere village 
called Nazareth. And so, as was customary at the time for any man older than 13 years of old of age, especially if you're returning to your hometown, you'd be asked to stand up and speak in the synagogue on the Sabbath. And so, of course, they asked Jesus to speak that Sabbath. But they were surprised. They were surprised at the authority with which he taught them. He was teaching initially just astounded them at how brilliant it was. But then it struck a nerve. Where did he get all this? They might have been asking. What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hand? Verse 2 from today's readings. And that's when their familiarity with the Jesus they'd grown up with hit home. And scripture tells us, and they took offense at him. Isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary, brother of James and Joseph and Jonah and Simon, and not his sisters here with us? In other words, their experience and their reason clouded, obscured what they were able to hear that Jesus was teaching them. They had only heard the Jesus that they'd always known, that they knew was just one of them. They did not hear the divinely inspired miracle worker that had come home. Jesus was offering the people of his hometown a gift. The people who grew up with him and helped him grow into the person he was, he was offering them the gift of the Word of God. But it was up to them. It was their choice to open up their minds and their hearts to his words and his wisdom that morning. They could have chosen to believe that, as the angel had said to Mary many years beforehand, nothing is impossible with God. They could have accepted that God was at work in their midst, right there in Nazareth, working through their friend and their neighbor, Jesus. Or they could close their minds and hearts, and they could believe in that ancient expression that nothing really good comes out of Galilee, especially in its beginning insignificant little village like theirs. They turned their back on that divine gift, the gift that was in their midst, because they thought that they knew better than the Jesus they grew up with. Unfortunately, most of them chose their experience over Jesus' words, and as you read the Gospel of Mark, they took offense at him. They closed their minds, they closed their hearts, they rejected him. And Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. And that's got to be one of the saddest, script, saddest phrases in the entire scripture. Jesus was amazed at their unbelief. Can you imagine how Jesus would have felt? The people he grew up with and looked up to as he was growing up were rejecting the divine gift he was offering them. His mentors, the people he had worked and worshipped with, had decided that his message of universal love was worthless. And it wasn't that he needed their adulation. He was simply sharing the greatest gift that he had, the Word of God. But they simply couldn't hear it because of who they thought that he was. It was a brutally tragic moment. But frankly, would any of us have reacted differently? To be honest. Have we changed that much since Jesus' time? Week after week we hear of God's grace and God's love and God's wisdom for all of us. Everyone around us shares God's love and the spirit of Christ in them. We hear that we can learn and grow closer to God by knowing the beauty and interconnectedness of nature all around us. We hear we can learn, hear we can learn and grow closer to God by taking time to listen to those who are outcast and forgotten in our society. And these are the lessons we hear and we read and we discuss every week, week after week. But honestly, frankly, how many of us 
would find it difficult to listen and hear God's wisdom from someone we've known since they were a little child. The person that we've known from the time they couldn't eat or walk or even talk. The person you've watched make mistake after mistake as they slowly learn to become the amazing person they are now. The person who may have struggled in school and we're not really sure how much they heard when you brought them to church each week. If our children speak to us with authority about God's love and about Scripture, telling us that they know more about God's Word than we do, how would we respond? Probably not well. How many of us would simply assume that we knew better than they did? We would assume we would never assume that they were divinely inspired because we're inhibited by our memories of them as a small child. It's not unusual to discount the words of someone when you know all their mistakes and both. The same can be said for that person. When we walk downtown and we see them living in homelessness, living on the street, how hard would it be for us to hear the word God's love and God's wisdom if we stopped and talked to them and hear what they learn? Or would we simply discount anything they say that might contradict what we already believe because of how they're living? Many of us have the same challenge truly hearing the words of an isolated senior, senior who's struggling to remember how to get dressed or feed themselves. And if they ask us to sit with them so they could help us understand God's will better, would we simply discount their words because they struggle with dementia or Alzheimer's? Despite hearing Scripture and knowing that God works through the meek, the humble, and the outcast, how often do we assume that the apparently successful stranger has a lot more to teach us than the person right beside us, sitting next to you right now? Obviously, that doesn't mean we have to accept everything everybody tells us. And we are going to disagree, probably often. There are so many layers of wisdom and meaning in Scripture, and so many lessons that we can learn from God the discussions are endless, infinite, just as God is. And each of us can only ever know a small portion of that divine wisdom. But each of us can know our own little part. And that little part may contradict what someone else has learned about the person next to us. And frankly, that's good. Questions are good. Talking to others whose beliefs are different than ours is good because with respect and open heart and open mind, those discussions can all lead us to greater connections to God and greater connections to each other. Exactly what God wants for us. As I mentioned before, Scripture helps lead us and helps summon the kingdom of heaven by encouraging us to ask questions and consider new ways of understanding by helping us to listen and hear God and to hear each other. Scripture invites us into a deeper relationship with our loving God and the love of others through connection and understanding. Every day, God offers us wisdom in each of our own experiences, but also in the voices and actions of others around us. God chose the son of a carpenter and an ordinary woman from a nowhere village in the middle of a forgotten land to change the world, to bring humanity back to God's love, to start us on the path to the kingdom of heaven. And just as Jesus said, truly I tell you, unless you be changed and become like little children, you will never know the kingdom of heaven. Precious gems of wisdom that we can find everywhere, from the youngest child to the oldest senior, as long as we have open hearts and open minds, and keep asking those questions, keep being willing to learn 
about God's love. Amen. Let's sing, Will You Come and Follow Me? I see you standing around in a strange situation that needs to be turned around Now tell us what can we do I've walked through every day just wondering about everything I'd have to say To get an answer from you Now we need some guidance, something to remind us Of what we've been drawn to this earth for Oh, just give us Jesus And we swear that we will Go out and change the world with Him Now watch our generation begin Now watch our generation begin Every once in a while We see so many people whose faces never held a smile Right down like a child's broken dreams No 
knowing that as days go on, our time runs out to stand as one. And that transformation that we desperately need. Now we need a song, something to move us along. A rousing cry to truth. So just give us Jesus, and we will give our all. We will give everything. So watch a generation begin Let us pray. Holy God and Jesus, you reached out to so many different people with so many different needs in so many different situations. We thank you for all the ways you've reached out to us in the embrace of a prayer, in the energy of a song, in the wisdom of scripture or the words of a friend. Sometimes your healing brings comfort. Sometimes it brings challenge and the call to respond. Hear us as we seek your comfort and your challenge for the world, for the church, and for our own lives. Dear God, bring comfort to those who are facing struggles this summer, those whose crops have withered in the extremes of weather, or those who cannot find enough workers for their businesses or workers who can't find secure employment, or those who simply can't find an affordable place to live, and all those who are simply losing hope that things will ever improve. Loving God, bring comfort to those who are lonely or shut in, and all those who have lost beloved family members or friends in recent days. Bring comfort to those who feel pain or anxiety without relief, or those who wait for diagnosis or life-restoring treatment. Dear God, offer peace to those who know that there is no treatment, and wait in hope for your eternal love. Bring challenge to those who want to make the world a better place, and all those who work within science and medicine and the law to improve the quality of life for all people. 
Give them a vision of their work that is both just and courageous, so that no part of society is neglected or mistreated. Challenge those who stir up violence and unrest with a sense of shame for the cost to innocent lives, and with a deeper understanding of what justice really means. Dear God, we continue to pray for Diana this morning. We continue to pray that she knows your love. She knows our support. And she knows that she is surrounded by friends and family who care for her and help her through every challenge that she faces. Dear God, we pray that Diana knows your peace, your strength, and your wisdom. And loving God, we miss Aileen. She is such a beautiful part of this congregation, of our faith family. She is still continuing to suffer from illness and injury, but she knows that you are with her. She knows your love, and she knows that this congregation continues to pray for her week after week, helping her with strength, love, and support. Please, give her the strength and help to come back into our midst and join our family in worship yet again. Gracious God, we offer you these prayers and continue to pray the way that Jesus taught us. And this morning we'll be using a version called from the Common English Bible. Our Mother and Father who is in heaven, uphold the holiness of your name, bringing your kingdom so that your will is done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us for the ways we have wronged you just as we also forgive those who have wronged us. And don't be the us into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, let's sing once again, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. I suspect many of you are quite familiar with this one. Oh, 
as you go out into your week, be ready, be open for that unexpected voice bringing you the wisdom of God's love. Have a great week.